What is up fam? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Sarpon. If it's your first time here, welcome. This channel is dedicated to all things psychology, wellness, and graduate school. One of the things that I do on this channel is that I do my best to answer any questions that you guys have about psychology, wellness, or even graduate school. And one of the questions today that some of you guys have been asking me about is what's up with psychologists and medication? What are the real guidelines in terms of if psychologists can or cannot prescribe medication to their clients and what are some of the regulations that are going on. So hopefully in this video, we will be able to cover a little bit of that and talk about that and hopefully give you guys some more clarity on what the guidelines are. So if you haven't already, definitely subscribe to this channel if you're looking for more psychology tips or if you have any questions about clinical psychology. So one of the things about whether or not psychologists can prescribe medication, the answer is that yes, Psychologists can prescribe medication, but only in certain states. Now, you'd have to do your research in terms of what those states are and perhaps even what those regulations are for those particular states. But it is true that psychologists could prescribe medication in certain states. Now, the other thing though is that for most states though, psychologists are actually going to need additional education in order to prescribe medication for their specific state. So what this type of education looks like is that there are these master programs, usually one to two year programs that are usually have online courses. So all of the program, all of the courses are done online and they only allow people who are already in doctoral programs or who already have a doctorate in counseling or clinical psychology. Now, the basis of these programs is basically they are called psychopharmacology programs. And so they specifically work with medication and teaching clinicians the basics of medication and basically how to prescribe medication in appropriate ways for their clients and their patients. And so basically what you would do if you wanted to actually prescribe medication to your patients in the future is that you would either finish your doctoral program in clinical psychology, this could be a PhD or a PsyD, and then you'd actually have to go back to school to do a two year program in psychopharmacology and then through that certification, that would actually allow you to prescribe medication to your future patients and clients. Now for some people, this is actually amazing because when you think about the type of things that they can do for their clients. They can do therapy now, they can prescribe medication, and they can do psychological assessment. So essentially, for if a patient comes to their door and wants treatment, they wouldn't have to go to anybody else. They wouldn't have to go to a mental health counselor. They wouldn't have to go to a, a psychiatrist. They could get all of their mental health needs done and met by this particular psychologist who is trained in psychopharmacology. And so for a lot of patients, this is actually a huge benefit. And even for the psychologist, this could also be a potential benefit, especially if you think about some of the rates and some of the, the salaries that they can have in terms of doing these additional things that other psychologists cannot do or other therapists cannot do. So that is one thing to think about if you are actually wanting to go into this field and perhaps get this specialty and get this additional education is there are some potential benefits for that. Now, the, the huge con is, I'm sure something you've already thought about is that becoming a clinical psychologist is already such a long process. Could be four years of undergrad, another two years of a master's program, and another five to six years of a PhD or a PsyD. And then you also have to do an internship and also do a postdoc in order to actually become a licensed psychologist. So you're looking at anywhere from after college you know, four, five, six, seven, eight years after college. And so it could be a very lengthy process. And so going through that and then actually going back to school to get a master's in psychopharmacology may not even be worth it at all, especially if you're the type of clinician who may not even actually use your certification to prescribe medication. So I do think it's important to understand for you what the benefits what the pros are, what the cons are, and if it's even actually going to be something that's worth it for you. Now, I did wanna give you guys some a little bit more of a background information about how these programs started. Basically, these programs started because there was a critical need 
for training prescribing psychologists to actually help address the nation's healthcare disparities, especially in inner cities and rural areas. In fact, in many instances, patients do not have access to mental health services and may need to wait weeks for an appointment. For example, in Illinois, there are over 50 counties with no inpatient psychiatric facilities. And additionally, clinical psychopharmacology allows psychologists to prevent and reduce patient over-medication. So basically, it's about a numbers game. There's just not enough psychiatrists and there's very few psychologists who actually prescribe medication. And based on the needs of a population, you actually might benefit from more psychologists getting this certification in order to actually serve the needs of its citizens and its population. So that's a little bit where this, this, this certification is coming from. I do want to encourage you guys to really look at the state regulations because there are some states where even if you do have a master's or a degree in psychopharmacology and you're a psychologist, you still will not be able to prescribe medication. I think California is one of these states where even if you have a master's degree in psychopharmacology, you still cannot prescribe medication. They only allow their psychiatrist and the mental health side to prescribe medication. So that is something to be aware of in terms of where you travel, where you go to school, and where you get your certifications from. So there you guys have it. There's a little bit more detail in terms of how exactly psychologists can prescribe medication and perhaps what they need in order to prescribe medication, perhaps what they don't need in certain states. Hopefully that gives you guys a better, more clarity in terms of what the heck is going on with this whole pharmacology side and the psychopharmacology side. But if you guys have any further questions about this, definitely put it down in the comment section below. For anyone who has this certification or who has gone through this program, I would love to know your perspective and your opinions and your experience on how you have gone through the program and what your experience has been like for you. And I'm sure the community would love that as well. But for that, that will end the video for today. I hope to see you guys in the next video.